Hello Israel Effects people, I'm AK and this is Fluid Ninja Live and in the previous video we have covered opening Fluid Ninja Live project and merging the Fluid Ninja Live project to a standard Unreal project and to a custom project. The next thing we need to do is to start where we have left off. This is Unreal 4.25 with Fluid Ninja already merged and so this is basically where we have left off yesterday uh, after merging Fluid Ninja we have placed uh, a standard Fluid Ninja Live Fluid Simulation container on level by simply going to the content browser into the Fluid Ninja Live subfolder and dragging the Fluid Ninja Live actor on stage and I would like to differentiate between area effects and character effects because basically what we did yesterday was an area effect. Ninja Live containers are like standalone autonomous containers that could be set up to interact with various environmental effects or characters but uh, they are very dynamic and handle a lot of possible reactions. Um, just to provide this, I'm cloning this container and uh, making another environmental effect, if you like it this way. All right. Um, now that I have con uh, cloned the container, let's see what happens. Well, yeah, <laughs> visually not too appealing, but we have two containers on level now. Let's uh, modify this one a little bit. Remember, we have already made a filter. If I'm going to the actor details, to the live interaction group, you could see that we have defined two bones, calf left and calf right. And this is where um, our actor is interacting with this scene. Uh, what if I would like to change this? Well, yeah. How about picking a finger, pinky or middle? Well, yeah. These are the standard bone names in the default palm. And so, here we go. We have these bones defined. And what happens if I remove these specific bone names? Well, in that case, the whole character is going to interact with the container. All right, let's just uh, change the material and load a preset to differentiate it from the previous container. So I'm rescaling on the actor details panel, the actor components window, selecting Ninja Live component, and I'm assigning a transparent material. Here you could see the already defined list of materials. You could add your own materials, but the second one um, marked with index number one is density buffer translucent. So I have defined this. What I see now is um, that the character is entering this translucent plane. And so what if I would like to change the preset? Presets are defining fluid simulation parameters. You could define your own parameters, but here we have something like, uh, do we have like something like smoke? Yes, smoke to, oh, by the way, I'm switching back to the calves. Because we don't need the whole skeleton. Right. So what do we have now? Uh -huh. Well, we have a smoke-like thing as I'm crossing this uh, container. And you might have noticed that the smoke starts a bit earlier before the character seems to encounter this uh, two-dimensional surface. This is because uh, the overlap volume is set to relatively high. Um, I'm selecting the fluid simulation container, going to the live interaction group and changing the Z scale. Do you see? the previous value and the current value. I'm making it 
as thin as a slice and now I'm precisely capturing the moment when the character is crossing this plane. Right on. Uh, so what about changing the preset once again, just to see how it works. Drive component, and I'm changing it to smoke one. Right. Uh huh. Mm, and rotating the container. This might be fine. Changing the scale a little bit. And here we go. Ah, uh, yeah, we have this smoke column thing, and as I'm crossing it, uh, uh, it's swirling a bit. I'm changing the resolution, going to Ninja Life component, performance group, and doubling it to 500 pixel. And one thing you might have noticed, that it's a two-dimensional fluid sim. It looks ugly, just ugly, from a certain angle. So what can we do? Well, we could switch on camera facing. We are going to the component details. And in the live interaction group, we could switch on camera facing and lock the vertical axis. So, uh, the same thing happens. We're crossing this smoke column, but this time the, the smoke column is facing the camera. There's another thing I noticed. When we have camera facing planes in the scene, they might have a certain interference with the scene motion blur. So, for this reason, I'm simply disabling motion blur by placing Ninja Live Utilities. Ninja Live Utilities have loads of functions, but here, here is one function for sure, it's killing motion blur. So, we don't have problem with the camera facing plane anymore. Right. So, uh, the basic concept is when you drag a fluid simulation actor on stage, it is acting like an environmental effect. You would use it for making magic circles or for a river crossing or for a portal, but it's definitely a, um, a location bound effect and it's not linked to the character in any ways. So, uh, the next thing I would like to do is add Ninja Live component to my character. Ah, yes, yeah, sorry. To be correct, it is Ninja Live component that we are adding to the character. I would like to remind you that on the project homepage in the user manual, you could find a detailed description for all these. Actually, it is 10.3 that we are going to cover. You see, adding Ninja Live components to your own actor classes. Before we start, let's have a look at this infographics. This Low chart. You see the pink box that is Ninja Live Actor component, and as you could see, it is embedded to Ninja Live Actor. So, in cases like this, it is actually a Ninja Live component running wrapped inside a Ninja Live Actor. Ninja Live Actor does the overlap detection, and Ninja Live component does the rest, like the fluid simulation and stuff. And so, you could embed, have a look at this bottom part of the flowchart. Um, you could embed Ninja Live component to any arbitrary actor. You could find instructions and you could check this flowchart, but the point is that it is 10.3 with a step by step guide on the right. It is 12 points, a bit longer than Merging Ninja, but let's start it. So, we are going to add Ninja Live component to a character. Um, I'm selecting the palm and I'm kindly asking Unreal to show me where the pawn is. The good thing is that uh, when I set up this third person shooter default, it has already cloned. So I'm not going to modify the factory settings. I have like a separate blueprint. I'm double clicking the third person character blueprint. This content is here by default. And so the first and most important things, thing is going to the class settings, interfaces, and add live interface. This is important because if you have multiple, multiple 
uh, fluids in containers on level, they have to communicate with each other to avoid uh, interference, and this is how they recognize each other. So adding Ninja Live interface. Second, I'm adding a, a static mesh component. Uh, the name is not important. I'm just calling it Trace Mesh to easily identify it. As you could see, the template is currently empty, and I have a predefined uh, trace mesh for you. But you could place your own trace mesh here. It's really just a plane, and I'm placing it here. So we have the trace mesh added, and I'm adding Ninja Live component. It is available in the list since you have successfully merged Ninja. So all components added. Uh, no even big in play in this blueprint, so I'm adding one. And the first thing I would like to do on even big in play is to tell Ninja Live component about the trace mesh. And this is going to happen by setting a trace mesh variable here. Set trace mesh component. So on even begin play, I'm telling Ninja Live component that hey, here's the tree smash, trace mesh component, please use this. Okay, I'm changing in the blueprint to the viewport, and we have this <laughs> trace mesh here like a skirt. So uh, it's a bit ugly. Mm, I'm setting it to size three, and I'm immediately making it invisible because it disturbs me big time. As you could see, it's not going to be hidden in game, just in the editor. Right. One more thing I need to do is I'm selecting Ninja Live component, and we need to tell the component that he's uh, it is embedded. And returning to the infographics, as you could see here, the original. Uh, dedicated Ninja Live actor does a lot of work with overlap detection. And Ninja Live component does not have any overlap detection functionality. And the logic behind is that we don't need that, because if you embed it to a character, probably you want it to interact with that very single character. So uh, overlap detection is removed for performance reasons, but we have to tell the component that he's not going to receive any overlap information. So I have selected the component, I'm going to the live interaction group of the component, and here is this flag, continuous interaction with owner actor. By the way, we have tooltips for every single of these options, and you could read mm, what the option is about and how to set it up. Anyway, I'm just ticking this one. All right, so um, let's see what happens. Yes, so we have this planar skirt and it moves together with the character on a very ugly way and it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, tracing all the bones. So let's uh, fine tune this a little bit. First, I'm going to the Ninja Live component group and in the interaction I'm switching on camera facing. Yo, this is going to give us a much better result. The next thing I would like to do is uh, uh, to filter the bones. So again, in the component, in the live interaction group, here is this option, continuous interaction bone view. So I'm adding two bones, and it should be middle finger left and middle finger right. Here we go. Uh -huh. So, uh, compared to this previous environmental effect or area effect, this one is embedded into the character and goes with the character and probably you could do things like uh, serving magical effects, flaming hands, muzzle of fire, anything that is related to the character. Ah, and by the way, so uh, my character with the uh, 
and that the ninja life component is walking into this autonomous container with another component and there's no interference so the two effects working completely separately in case you if you have forget to add the ninja live interface you have a very rude bug here well um shortly that's it so we have added a uh, ninja live component to our pawn again uh, in the manual it is 10.3 a step-by-step -step guide and you could follow up this thing carefully just to give you another example I'm saving this level going to the tutorial levels and workspace fallacy yeah that will be fine because we have this nice little orb here on the right and I just wanted to let you know that it's set up the same way so uh, you don't necessarily have to include ninja life component to a pawn you could include it to vehicles or any other blueprint class it's really up to you but definitely it's like the character effect type of setup and it's it should be differentiated from this setup which is like uh, placing an, uh, a container on level and making it behave like an environmental effect well yeah <laughs> this <laughs> this careful is like halfway because it could be pushed so it's like an environmental effect that is <laughs> That could be used if you have like a little wagon w filled with water or fluid or cattle. Anyways, thank you for your patience and see you next time.